Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Joomla Beat podcast, the podcast all about Joomla, where you learn all the ins and outs and everything in regards to the Joomla industry and all the people in it as well. In this podcast episode, I have a very special guest joining me on this podcast episode. We've met many times now, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it is Jesse all the way from the Netherlands, and he is here to talk about his business, how he got into Joomla, and a whole bunch of things that he's been working on, including a brand new book that he's been playing around with, not playing around with, working on, and has finally gotten <laughs> released as well. And you can buy that in the Amazon store right at this moment as well. So, Jesse, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks to you, uh, Pete. Um... Glad to be here, and glad Excellent. to uh, have also the opportunity to to talk about my book uh, a little bit. Yeah, so that's well, awesome. We've, we've met a couple of times now. What, what was the first one? Jane Beyond. Uh, well, we, we we've met a couple of Jane Beyonds, and and we yeah. we met also at the Joomla World Conference in um, in Boston, or actually we met up in New York. Yes, afterwards. that's right. Yeah, and we cool. ate at yeah. that. Um, uh, that Dallas diner where that where I got a massive plate of ribs that was fantastic. Yeah, American style. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Good times indeed. But enough of that. We're here to talk more about you and how you got into the Joomla space and how you got all started with all this stuff. So, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Um, well, I, I in uh, in international spheres, I'm mostly um, am called uh, Jesse. Well, actually, my name is uh, Jesse. It's a it's a really strange uh, Dutch name, even for the Dutch. Um, so I live in the Netherlands, um, and I um, I build uh, Joomla extensions and Magento extensions for a living uh, through my company called uh, Yerio. And uh, well, I've been doing that for for over six or seven years already, so that's uh, quite some time. Um, before that, I was already involved with uh, with uh, Joomla actually from um, from the beginning of, beginnings of Joomla, Joomla 1.0. Um, I built uh, a website also with uh, with Mambo, and that's uh, that's uh, how I got into the to, into the whole community. So I'm, um, this year there's going to be a, a Joomla Day the Netherlands again uh, every year, and this is going to be the 10th uh, anniversary. So it's a special thing for a Joomla Day, and actually um, I might be one of the few that have attended all 10 of them. So that's kind of special uh, as well. <laughs> pretty cool. That that is pretty impressive. Have you got all the name tags from each one of the Joomla Day events? <laughs> Well, every time when I come home, I throw the name tag right away into the bin, so I haven't oh, got any oh, of no. them. <laughs> Would have been quite a collection to have and take photos of. But anyway, that, sure. that's pretty cool. You you were there all the way from the beginning. But what about all this Magento development that you do as well? You've been doing that for quite yeah. a while too. Yeah, to, to be honest, um, when I started building uh, Joomla websites, uh, one of the first websites uh, I built was a, was a FirstMart uh, webshop. Um, it used to be based on some kind of static page generator, and then uh, the customer wanted to have his uh, shop replaced with uh, Um So I built this uh, FirstMart shop, and I extended it, and I uh, encountered some issues, and those issues could only be solved by uh, making core hacks. And then, then after maintaining that that same Virgmart website uh, for for some time, it just grew to me that that uh, there had to be some other solution with with more features, more extensibility, and um, and actually have to, uh, never the need to to make any core hacks. And then I, th I think that was in 2008 or so, uh, Magento 0.9 came out, and. That was definitely not fit to build a web shop with, so even worse than than Virgmart back then. Right. Um, and but actually, it 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 sounded right. It sounded like very extensible, meant for enterprise markets. Um, so back in those days, I decided to to make the switch more or less, but still stick to the the, the Joomla community as well. So um, basically, from from the moment where uh, Magento One came out. Um, that was probably around the time that I also chose to be in two worlds uh, at the same time. T two very separate worlds, two very different worlds, but two worlds uh, nonetheless. Uh. 
and you created a bridge between those two worlds called Mage Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's it's uh, pretty advanced as well. Um, I always describe it as uh, not just a bridge, but uh, a bridging technology, um, because the bridge itself uh, is is only describing like the process of sending data from one end to the other, so from Joomla to Magento, or from Magento to Joomla. But what you can do with that um, is is almost like endless, uh, just like Magento itself is uh, is endless. Um, I started MageBridge in around 2009, so that's yeah, 2015. So that's al almost like f six years ago, uh, qu quite some time already. Um, and the beginnings were just um, a, a kind of ugly um, cut and paste story that that you were having some visual blocks in Magento and you could forward them to uh, to Joomla. Um, and after that, I started to synchronize uh, users, synchronize search, uh, synchronize uh, plugin events so that you can write a, a Joomla plugin for a Magento event or a Magento plugin for a Joomla event. And that's, that's where actually the things get a little bit crazy. So, um, yeah, definitely MageBridge is, is um, a simple tool, but it's also a very advanced tool. And sometimes it's just driving me crazy of of all the things that can be done with it. So. I'm, I'm actually glad that someone decided to tackle that and, um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. and deal with that mess, because I'm sure I wouldn't have liked to be doing any of that work, Yeah, which yeah. is absolutely but, crazy. And, and to be honest, um, uh, first of all, Joomla is, of course, very popular, and, and, and we love it. Um, Magento, is uh, it has its own specific kind of uh, community, uh, more business-driven, uh, more about the money, less about the fun, uh, but it's still an open-source community. Um, and then the people who are interested in both um, are far less than the Joomla community, Magento community. So uh, no, no matter how you face it, MageBridge is like a niche market, or it's a niche solution for a niche market. Um, but, well, I try to target that market as best I could, and uh, I think I did the job uh, pretty well. I think so too. So what was your main reason to wanting to bridge those two? Why, why not uh, just move to Magento or just stick with a Joomla-based solution? Why, why bridge, bridge them? Well, I, I think the, the, the backgrounds of it are, are first of all, I, I jumped into Joomla and became a Joomla expert um, before I, I was ready for Magento. Um, so back then I knew everything about Joomla and uh, a little bit about Magento. So obviously um, when you're trying to embrace uh, a new system, you're also trying to um, make it work, make it combine uh, with, with everything you already know. Um, and back then the, 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 the lead developer of Magento itself, uh, he came up to me and he said, well, somebody should build this bridge. So it started <laughs> me wondering like, hey, could I do that job? Um, and I started to experiment for one weekend um, and make, made it work. Um, so it, it was first started as, a, an, as an experiment, more or less. Um, and then it became more real, then it became more solid. Um, and only then it occurred to me that, that a bridge has some opportunities. Um, Magento tries to be the best uh, e-commerce system there is. Uh, for sure in the open source market, but they're also trying to uh, take over the enterprise market. Um, but face it, Joomla is the best uh, CMS there is. So we're not going to discuss WordPress or Drupal or whatever. No, Joomla is like the thing for CMSs. Um, so if you can combine the both, you can combine the best CMS with the best uh, shop. And that's, uh, that's just adding in for a lot of new uh, opportunities. So, for instance, if you're building a Joomla site, and this Joomla site uh, needs a little button for selling something, uh, you're probably best off just to implement uh, a kind of, uh, well, PayPal button or a small e-commerce uh, solution within Joomla. Um, likewise, if you're building a Magento shop and you don't care about the blog, you don't care about news, uh, you don't want to write anything other than product descriptions, uh, then Magento is, is fine as well. But as soon as, as, soon as you want more, um, selling a lifestyle or uh, a, a very innovative blog with, with news that comes and goes, 
um, and combine that with uh, a huge catalog, then then you need both Joomla and Magento for sure. Mm, definitely. And at that time when you were doing all this, uh, there was no real shopping cart solution for Joomla either. So it 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 really helps and uh, em not embraces, but opens up opportunities there for um, decent or yeah. really really good and complex e-commerce solutions. So it's like you were saying, it's a very niche market, but you seem to be doing very well and growing your business more and more every day. And you're a very, very busy man. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> so how on earth have you found the time to actually write this book about plugin development? Um, I don't know. And actually, this is only like <laughs> part of the story because um, in, um, um, in 2012, so that's already two and a half years ago or three years ago almost, um, I started writing the first uh, chapters of this book. Um, and then I got very busy, first of all, because I decided to cycle on a bicycle, so a step bike, to Spain, which took me two months. And I had this illusion that I could finish the book while uh, driving to, to, to Spain. Well, I didn't. <laughs> so it took me another two and a half years. Um, and and in, when I came back, I was working more or less on that, but also picking up on the business uh, and MageBridge and, and uh, extensions. Um, in 2013, I, I had another try, um, but then I started uh, with uh, a co-partner to um, to create a new company, uh, a printing business with uh, printing on demand. So actually, my whole 2013 was again not about my book. Um, but about starting a completely new business. Um, at the end of 2013, I just decided to step out of that business again because it was not related to Joomla and Magento that much. So uh, <laughs> it was kind of weird to get into a business and get out of it in the same year. Um, so back in 2013, I, did, I realized like, hey, but uh, jumping into a new business, uh, fooling around with stuff I don't know that's it's nice to do something different, but um, good business is also to be made still with the stuff I do already, so Joomla, Magento, Magebridge, um, and this book I started already. So in 2014, or actually the whole year of 2014 was all about uh, finding more and more time to finish the first chapters, finish the other chapters, uh, getting the, the distribution done, uh, finding the right people helping me for the reviewing process, well, and so on. Um, but I have to admit, um, I cut back in social time a bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just costed a lot of time and you just squeeze in all the, the hours in the evenings you have uh, just to, to get that one thing going while still making sure the rest of the business doesn't uh, suffer. So quite busy for sure, yeah. So uh, before we get into the content of the book, uh, perhaps you'd like to share with people a little bit about the process of uh, distribution and how you're actually selling the book in general as well. Did you go through a yeah. traditional publisher or are you self-publishing? Well, um, I'm, I'm going to show off a little bit. I'm not sure whether that's going to 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 be uh, appear, appear on the screen properly. But well, this is the book, and actually very small um, in in the corner. It says Yerio. I <laughs> need to keep it close even. Yerio Education, um, and that's part of the the deal that actually I started up my own uh, publishing company. So in 2013, to make this book happen. So I don't have, um, how do you say that, an external publisher. I did everything myself. Um, and that includes like hiring uh, a designer to do the design work, uh, the inner and outer work, um, uh, getting the right price from a publisher because I'm, I'm uh, publishing in printed form. So uh, how do you say that, the dead tree format. Um, and what I did was basically get the right prices with the right uh, partners. Um, the, the distribution itself was also a hassle, uh, getting the book for, from, um, uh, from Europe into uh, the US. Um, and again, I did everything myself, so finding uh, a, a parcel company to do the shipping, finding an inter intermediate party to handle all the 
uh, duties and uh, the taxes at um, how to say that at uh, the, the customs, the U.S. customs. So um, yeah, if if I if I put it in a hole, um, it's it's like um, the entire thing was very lengthy, a lot of time consuming, uh, stuff to be done, and actually I did it all by myself. Um, more or less to prove that it could be done by myself. Um, <laughs> I'm planning actually to write a couple of blogs about that as well, just to make sure that all the information I gathered is also shared with, uh, with other uh, authors that, that are thinking about doing it themselves. Um, and if, if, I, if I think about the publishing part, so finding uh, a copier, finding uh, the right channels to, to, uh, for marketing and distribution, you can do that by yourself. But as soon as you ship your products abroad, so if you ship your products um, across the ocean to, for instance, from Euro Europe to the US, it really becomes important to, do, um, to have an intermediate party to do that. because. It got me so frustrating to to get into the U.S. customs laws and regulations. Too difficult to do it all all by yourself. Looks like you learnt a lot in that process. I heard I heard sure. a lot of people that do this self-publishing tear their hair out, and it sounded like you did as well. Uh, you yeah. still have a lot of hair there. So you did <laughs> exactly. pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on getting that all done and doing it all yourself as well. That that's that's quite a feat in itself. Yeah. But thanks. Yeah. Let's get into the nuts and bolts and what's actually in the book. So when people actually have a look at it, uh, what can they be expecting to learn? Yeah. Um, well, the the book is called uh, Programming Joomla Plugins, and that's actually three words that describe the whole thing best. Um, it's about Joomla. So that's the, the word in the middle. Um, it starts with programming Joomla, so that means PHP development. Um, it, uh, it's targeting developers who want to, to write their own PHP within Joomla and, and get that up a notch. Um, and then the third part, uh, so it's programming Joomla plugins. Um, well, it's all about plugins. Um, and if you're new new to Joomla, you have to realize that actually uh, Joomla knows a lot of di different extension types. So there are uh, components, modules, templates, um, libraries, and plugins. So of all these extension types, I'm only targeting a specific ex extension type called plugin. And that sounds kind of limiting. Um, and that was actually one of the main reasons why I wanted to write this book, um, because I read almost all the books that are that, that are there about Joomla programming um, and all those books discussed component development uh, how to write your own component how to write your own mo module and then they were explaining plugins and plugin events and plugin groups um, within a couple of pages so perhaps only two pages maybe 20 pages maybe 30 pages um, but always it was limited to just a smaller section of the bigger book. Um, and when I was writing plugins, um, I, ha I had to find uh, my own my own information or um, how to write your own plugin. The, the, the documentation for that could be found on, on the web. Um, the, 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 the documentation project of Joomla is pretty well. Um, but still, there's still a lot of work to be done on the documentation part. So, for instance, writing um, a Finder plugin, uh, so for the smart search uh, functionality of Joomla, um, a Finder plugin is, is, is very difficult to write. It, um, it's including so many different parts you have to know about. And there was only actually one wiki page uh, written by uh, Michael Babker. Uh, who actually integrated the Finder principle into Joomla itself as well. Um, and only his wiki page was the only resource there was available on, on the whole concept of, of Finder plugins. Um, well, actually, it's part of the, the core, and actually every, every component that is out there should have its own Finder plugin. So it always felt like there's there's missing some, something. There's there's this huge topic um, of events of plugins to be to, to be discussed, um, and why is there no documentation about it? So yeah, I, I wrote a book about it. <laughs> you filled in all the gaps. So it really sounds like there's a little bit for beginners in there and even advanced 
Joomla developers that have been using it for years and might not know about all these different aspects and different types of plugins that are possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, first of all, it's it's targeted for beginners. Um, so mm -hmm. if you're new to Joomla and you want to write plugins, um, it's taking you through all the steps of of getting the basics done, writing some XML code, uh, writing the basic structure of a PHP class, which is actually your your plugin. Um, and from there on, you can add uh, new methods, new event methods to that plugin to to add in functionality. Um, and it's uh, it's walking you through all the steps that are there. So that's the basic uh, part. Um, but because there are so many different plugin groups um, and so many different plugin events, um, there's actually so much to tell about everything. Um, so. As, as a developer myself, I learned a lot by writing a book, and I consider myself an experienced developer, and I was amazed to find out some things about Joomla that, um, that, that, that were, were perhaps familiar with the people who wrote it, um, but all the other developers probably didn't know about it because there's no documentation uh, for it as well. Um, so that was one of my incentives also to, to realize like, hey, but um, my book could be useful to, to anybody. Um, and I'm, I would be amazed to find anyone who knows everything that there is to tell in my book. So um, I, I talked with uh, so many uh, Joomla developers already. And the feedback I find uh, the most awesome is that uh, a lot of these developers told me, well, I thought there would be nothing in the book for me. And after all, I learned very useful things. <laughs> that's so that's like the best compliment ever. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's really yeah. good. So what are the, let's say, three best things that someone could get out of the book? Three um, juicy, juicy things out of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, f first of all, I think um, um, w when I'm when I'm dealing with coding, um, you're always like reading other people's code. And if you look at the, the the code base of Joomla itself, it's cleanly written. It complies to the Joomla coding standards. Um, and if you want to write your own plugin, um, the most beautiful thing to do is actually to write a plugin that looks like it's belonging to the Joomla project itself. So that means uh, clean code, um, well, almost no bugs, of course. For that, you would use uh, unit uh, testing, so PHP unit, uh, for instance. Um, and you can use some external tools like uh, PHP CS uh, uh, code sniffer um, to check whether your code is validating according to the, the, the standards. So that's my, my first giveaway, per, perhaps. Like, um, if you want to write a plugin, um, just make sure you, you have the basics right, but also the advanced uh, stuff. So create a unit test, make sure your code is complying to the standards, uh, the, the, the Joomla coding standards. Um, and then, then it just looks awesome already uh, without anybody uh, understanding what it actually is, uh, is doing. So once you make sure the basics are right, it looks already good b uh, f from the start. So that's that's my th first uh, takeaway, I think. Um, good one. I think so, yeah, and, and that's that's one thing I, I'm I'm learning myself as well because um, I have so many different extensions that don't comply uh, to the Joomla coding standards. So I still got some work to do after uh, after this book <laughs> for sure. Um, my my second takeaway is actually that that once you get the hang of creating a plugin, um, you can create a system plugin that fits all. Which means that that if you have um, a custom project, um, you always have like a couple of tricks you want to make that are there for that project, but you don't want to create a new extension because of that, or it's just it's just a piece of code that you need to chunk into this custom project and then forget about it. Um, well, having a custom project per uh, or sorry, a custom plugin per project is like a good idea. Um, so what you could do is perhaps create a repository of all these um, uh, PHP code segments that are um, useful for creating your own plugin and just keep them at this repository. And once you start up a new custom project, you just uh, start off with this empty plugin. And as soon as you need a, a functionality like blocking customers, uh, blocking vis visitors from this development site, you just uh, copy and paste the PHP code into your plugin and you're done. 
Um, so once you really get the hang of this, it's like um, here's my set of tricks, here's my plugin to implement the tricks, and I can copy things around easily um, and quicker. So that, that's my exact same with uh, yeah, and and that's and actually once once we have repositories for these plugin codes, uh, we can also share these repositories. Well, actually, we don't have to share the plugin itself. It's like snippets of code that can be exchanged uh, easily. So that's that's one of my yeah my higher <laughs> missions as well to make sure like we can do more and more with uh, with uh, plugins. Um, yeah, and, and then my one? my third. Yeah, um, that's probably about uh, that. That because plugins are so useful, actually every component um, should have enough plugin events. So if you're a component developer, um, you're probably dealing with content of some kind, and if you're following, um, if, if you're basing your work on on Joomla core. Um, component elements, so MVC out of the Joomla core, there's a big chance that actually um, by implementing the right uh, parent classes, you already implement some event methods right away. But if you don't, or if you don't have a component that deals with content but with e-commerce, um, you just have to make sure that every time when, the, when, when something special happens within your component, um, you add in a plugin event so that other plugin developers can create their own extensions on top of your own component. So basically, making your own component successful can only be done if your component supports enough plugins. And that's basically my third takeaway. Very, very interesting. It does sound like a very juicy book, and I want a copy now. But where can people and <laughs> where can listeners get a copy? Yeah, I think uh, the, the easiest way is uh, just to go to uh, either uh, uh, my own website, so yurio.com. Uh, once you enter the, the main page, there's a huge banner uh, with a link to the to the book uh, page. Um, a shortcut URL is also there. It's uh, called uh, slash uh, JPB, Joomla Plugins Book. Um, on the other hand, uh, my book is also on Amazon. So um, if you're um, if you're uh, looking for the book uh, outside of Europe, then it's best to uh, to buy the book through uh, Amazon. Uh, within Europe, it's cheaper to uh, purchase it from my own website because then my own distribution uh, takes over and uh, makes sure that the spending costs are uh, or the sending charges are as low as possible. Basically, that's good. So that's why 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 I R E O dot com slash jpb jpb all right i'll make sure i yeah. put that in the show notes for everyone as well so they can get that cool. link yeah. go directly to your website or to amazon perfect right. yeah um and on twitter and other social media networks where should people be following you um, well, I have my own personal um, uh, Twitter account, so that's uh, that's my full name, uh, Jesse Reitsma, um, and that's that's almost impossible to spell. <laughs> just just check out the notes as well, um, or just uh, the generic uh, Yerio uh, Twitter account. That's also there, and I'm I'm, I'm basically the, the man in charge of everything with uh, with Yerio. Uh, so any tweet that comes by or any email uh, is is being picked up by me uh, personally. So it's, uh, it should be easy to, uh, to find me and um, ask questions if needed. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks cool. so much for all your time, all the knowledge that you've shared as well, all those resources and juicy little bits. Good luck with... Well, thanks your, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you for coming on. Good luck with all your extension development and huge good luck with the book as well. Yeah, many thanks. All right. We'll talk soon. See you. <laughs> Bye.